yeah. It's war time. It's war time. Gather the troops, yeah. It's war time. The Most High is gonna have mercy on you, Black. Especially as Americans, if you return back to Him. It's war time. We are gods on this earth. We are God's chosen people. The Black, yeah. It's war time. You are now tuned in to Wartime Radio Show. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. Hey, this is Wartime Radio, WPJM 800. This is Officer Yawanathan. On my left, Officer Kalaya. On my right, Officer Eitan. And our new promoted officer and great reader today, Officer Yawanathan Kassak. All praises, all praises. Hey, I'm glad to be back on Wartime Radio. But just like every other time I'm on Wartime Radio, it's time to get busy. So let's start off and read Romans 15 and 4. It's the book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Hey, I'm going to tell you, this is another week of Christianity that they celebrate and say it's of the Bible. And just like every time they celebrate something, we on the front <laughs> line ready to tear it down. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We really like what you, what, what's this whole week called again? Uh, obviously, you said it's what? Palm Palm Week? Yeah, it's like it's Holy Week. It's a Holy Today week. is Palm <laughs> Sunday. They, they call it Holy Week leading up to the abomination on next Sunday. Right. Dang. Why can't you read that in the Bible, though? <laughs> Bruh. Hey, hey, welcome back, Ops. You know, it's been a minute. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. <laughs> so, radio listeners, I'm back for the hate. <laughs> hey. Let's start off with uh, First Peter. Christ is our example. They're getting ready to celebrate Easter. We know Christ didn't celebrate Easter. He didn't wake. He didn't get resurrected and say, "Hey, make sure y'all celebrate that now." Oh man, <laughs> it was never there, did it? No. He never said it. Not no Easter. No, no, no. He gave us a great example to follow, and I guarantee you, Easter is nowhere in the Bible that he said, "You know what? Follow that example." Go ahead, Book, Book of First Peter, chapter two, verse twenty-one. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow His steps. Hold on, right there. Yeah, I don't want that scripture to just go over our people's heads. Christ was the example for us to follow. Christ didn't come here, do the things that He did, then say, "You know what? I want y'all to do the opposite." He said, I want you to follow these examples. And there's no way in the Christian church do they follow the examples that Christ set. No, no, no. They actually tell you, no, 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 no. We can't be like Christ. We can't right. do it. You know, he kept the commandments, right? Right. So Christ kept the commandments. And then we'll say, we can't, we ain't got to do that. Christ kept the feast days. Yeah. <laughs> and the Christian church say, no, that's done away with. What example did why didn't he just say, you know what, I ain't for the die for y'all, for y'all not to do anything. I can just tell you that straight up. Do what you've been doing. You ain't been keeping the laws. <laughs> just keep on doing it. He, you know, he came to be the example of how you walk in righteousness, right. how to be perfect. Read the next part. Verse 22. Who did no sin. He did what? Did no sin. So why are the Christians running around saying, brother, we're all sinners? Christ said, Christ did no sin. That's the example that you should follow. Read. Neither was guile found in his mouth. How did Christ do no sin? He kept the laws. He kept the laws of God. That's very simple. If you did no sin, matter of fact, let's get what sin is. Because, you know, we have to bring this out every single time. Because our people love to say they're sinners and have no clue what they're even saying. It's just a catchphrase. <laughs> It's the book of First John, chapter 3, verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. So whoever commits sin breaks God's law. Read. For sin is the transgression of the law. 
So sin is the transgression, the breaking of God's law, knowing that the Father, that's who, that's who Christ uh, followed, that's who he obeyed. Right. He kept his word. Right. He did what was asked of him. Right. I'm gonna, let, me, let me back you up real quick. Let me get Hebrews 9, 16, because you said something a minute ago. Christ never left us. Uh, uh, it, the scripture that we just read about Christ being the example, right? If he was the example that we should that we are to follow, and he left us this great example on earth that we could do the will of his father, like you're bringing out, he did not leave or show the example of our people celebrating Easter. Right. Right. We like you cannot read that in the Bible. So let's read Hebrews nine and sixteen real, real quick. It's the book of Hebrews, chapter nine, verse sixteen. For where a testament is there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. Read on. For a testament is a force after men are dead. So that's like a will, right? Yep. The testament is a force mm -hmm. after he's dead, meaning if I will you something or if I give you, if I'm leaving something to you, which is this case would be the example that Christ set, if he's leaving us the example of him to follow, so he... he it, read that part again in 17. For a testament is a force. It's a force. His example is a force. After men are dead. After he is dead. But we cannot read the force of his testament being set in place to follow Easter. Right. No, he didn't why, do that. Why, why, why is that? So what, what, how, do we get, how do we get to this point? Like we take his death, that he, we take his death, and we now celebrate Easter. Where, where does that come from? Our people gotta wake up, man. Hey, it's the same. It's the same thing they was doing back in the day, anyway. Which I know, I was gonna probably bring something out, but just to speak on what Christ said, go to uh, Matthew five and the last verse. Matthew five and the forty eight, last verse. Because like you said, Christ left us an example. He told us what to do. He told us what to do. Because they'll tell us we can't keep the commandments. We don't have to. Read that real quick. It's the book of Matthew, chapter five, verse forty eight. Uh -huh. Be ye therefore perfect. Even as your father, which is in heaven, is perfect. But they'll tell you no one can be perfect. But why in the world would Christ tell you to do so if he don't think you could do it? But then our people will sit up here and celebrate everything outside of that with this with this abomination coming up. You you got a week of abomination. I didn't even know that's what it was called. But now you got a week leading up to, to Easter. Five of people to be in all mischief and all nonsense on Sunday with their purple and pink suits on dummies. Where that come from? Would they, why, How, why do they got to wear all the colors? Why <laughs> would, you can't, you can't <laughs> read that nowhere. Pastel. Yeah, the, what you call the pastel, pastel colors. colors. Pastel green, purple, pink. <laughs> Who oh, does looking, that? Like, looking like the Easter eggs they hunting. Right. Unbelievable. <laughs> it's terrible. Hey, read how you become perfect, though. Get that in Psalms. <laughs> Show up looking because, colorful. You know, it is this Bible is redundant. It never goes away from the subject matter that was from the very beginning. That God gave you his law, statute, and commandments. He gave you that so you can have wisdom on this earth. He gave you that so his children can rule the earth, not be ruled by the other nation. But he gave you these laws and commandments so you can rule the earth. So you can have wisdom while you're doing it. So you can love your brother properly. So mm -hmm. you can love your wife properly properly so you can raise your children properly these are the <laughs> things that we lack in the black community in the first place so we should want the laws but our people continuously run away from the laws read it's the book of psalm chapter 19 verse 7 Bring it out. the law of the lord is perfect it's perfect i mean i want you to think about that god gave us something that was perfect he said you do this right here Hey, that's a great thing. It's perfect. Because our people say, can't nobody be perfect. You won't even try. Try. Try not to hate your brother. Try not to turn your sister into a whore. You know what? Try to raise your children properly. Stop leaving them to the streets. You know what I'm saying? Try to do what the Most High like uh, asked you to do. Like you said, try to raise your children properly. Man, don't show them these dumb holidays out here that got nothing to do with them. 
Anisha, right. Anisha Stop the that. bunny that don't lay yeah. eggs. You know, like y'all Stop look it. look, you got young kids that really believe that a Easter bunny lay eggs. I remember I was chasing them thing. I was <laughs> racing to them eggs when I was a kid. I, I, I and I was I was slow. The other kids was big. They were too grown to be out there. Right around, you, I was. You I, I was traumatized. The, you was getting stiff on for the egg. <laughs> well, I got stiff on for the eggs, bro. And I was traumatized. But I, re- I remember. I remember being in church. My mic. My mic kind of low. I remember being in church as a kid. They would. They would try to make all the kids. I was bad. I was a little bad little kid. They would try to make all the kids stay in the uh like in this little one little area. So they could go hide, right. their butt, hide the eggs. <laughs> oh, well, man. the room had two doors, right? You could go outside out of each one of the doors. Yeah. So they would be in one side. I done snuck you, out you the other sneak side. And peek. Bro, I, I find out all the hiding places of the eggs. You got me caught up in this damn wickedness, man. <laughs> oh, shit. And all the damn eggs in my house. I ain't finished that <laughs> The law of the Lord is perfect. Uh huh. Converting the soul. It does what? Converting the soul. Hey, we need our souls converted. We've been some wicked individuals. We out here killing one another. Our, our daughters are thotting on Instagram, social media. Our men are wearing uh, clothes that women used to wear. Oh, you know, good. They the men are put on the chick jeans. Skin tight. Read. The testimony of the Lord is sure, Uh huh. making wise the simple. Hey, we simple. We simple. We need some wisdom. You just cut me, man. I'm mad as hell thinking about this damn thing. They had me running around the damn thing. Got it. hell. But I, we need to understand something. The enemies of God did this to us. The enemy of God put mm-hmm. his children into slavery, and they gave us Easter. They gave us Christmas. They gave us Thanksgiving. They gave us White Jesus. That white Jesus came with false doctrine. That false doctrine, you now have Easter. Right. So, hey, let's get that. So, give me that uh, Second Corinthians 11 and 4. It's the book of Second Corinthians, chapter 11 and verse 4. Bring it out. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus. That he is the so-called white man. Those are the enemies of God. Other nations, they came preaching another Jesus. Read. Whom we have not preached. Hey, our forefathers didn't preach uh, a Caucasian Jesus. Jesus was a black man with woolly hair, strong, strong, tall. He wasn't no hippie-looking Charles Manson. Read. Or if ye receive another spirit. Because what came with that false Christ that we that's portrayed in all your homes, that's portrayed in all your churches, hey, is a false spirit. It's a false spirit. They say, you know, God loves everybody. The one that tells you, come as you are. That it's okay to be homosexual. It's okay for men to marry men. It's okay for women to marry women. It's okay to celebrate all these holidays that's not of God. That's what comes with that false Christ. Read. Or if ye receive another spirit uh-huh. which ye have not received. Read. Or another gospel. Another what? Another gospel. Here's the, here's the number one thing about that gospel. That gospel is lawlessness. It's, it's, it allows you to sin. It allows you to be wicked, and it tells you that, you know what, if you just call on his name, you're going to be saved. That's what comes with that false gospel. It does not get you into the kingdom. It doesn't get you into the kingdom. It only gets you into that gate of the, gates of hell, period. You know what else that false doctrine gives you? It gives you a a very bad understanding of the resurrection of Christ. Right. How in the hell? Hey, man. <laughs> now, hey. that's the new doctrine right there. Hey, hey. Look, look. Watch this. <laughs> it's witchcraft. The Negro <laughs> forgot how to count to three. Exactly. That's what <laughs> right, I'm saying. Right. Hey, you can't make that stuff up. Can't make it up. All man. of a sudden, two plus one don't mean three no more. Hey. Destroy that, destroy that doctrine in the, less than two minutes. The, look, Easter. all you got to do is ask the question, how long was Christ supposed to be dead? We, we, didn't we go over this last week? Yeah, we did. Ask this last week. So y'all listeners, amen. Ask a Christian that believes Easter Sunday, that believes in that mess, just ask them when did Christ die. They're hey, going to tell you Friday. Hey, ask good, them, tell them to Friday. ask their pastor. Yeah, ask your pastor. They're mm-hmm. going to tell you Friday. Then you turn around and tell them to count the days because he was supposed to be dead three days 
three nights. Right. So if you literally just do the math, Easter Sunday don't line up. So you right. don't even have to be a Bible scholar. You ain't eat. <laughs> Bro, right, you, you can you, you, you can figure you, that you can out. You be three years old and figure that and out. Figure that out, cause it's easy. One, two, three. You know, Friday that ain't Friday. day one, cause he exactly. died on supposedly so, died on Friday with that doctrine. So you can get a D in the kindergarten and figure it out. Yeah, stop it. Yeah, so get it's Friday. Friday. Saturday is one. Sunday is two. Monday would be three. At least y'all could get the count right. Y'all can't even do that right. right, right. You'd still be wrong, but you know. <laughs> You'd still be wrong, but you can't even get the count right. right. Unbelievable. Hey, unbelievable. That's why it's witchcraft but, right there. That's but, why it's witchcraft. Hey, we but since we're talking about Jesus, remember Jesus warned us. He said, Be not deceived. Mm -hmm. And you know what? We say, Hey brother, they lied to you. And you know what they say? Not my pastor. Oh goodness. Not my pastor. Well, aren't you going to believe Christ? They always say my pastor told me. Give us that know, Matthew 24. I like to hear Christ. It's, it's so crazy how in these last days, everybody's a scholar. Right. Everybody's a Bible scholar. <laughs> like the, the average person walking down the street, you go to hand them a flyer and to tell them what this gospel is about mm -hmm. turns into a scholar. As soon as you, as <laughs> soon as you set up shop on the right. corner, everybody wants to show up and act like they've been teaching on the corner before you ever got there. <laughs> Where are you going off? Matthew 24 and 4. Okay. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 4. Bring it out. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Hey, Jesus made it clear. He said, Don't let no man deceive you. Because you know what? Our enemies deceived us, and now you have your wicked Negroes. Mm -hmm. They love to call us Pharisees, but you know what? Them, your Pharisees, them, your liars. Them the ones that are not following Christ. Right. Them the ones that reject him. Them the ones that reject his word. Read. For many shall come in my name saying I am Christ and hey. shall deceive many. That's what they did. That's why you're in their churches. Mm -hmm. they, hey, they say, hey, they're going to get you into the kingdom. Come, come worship Christ. Mm -hmm. They said they was Christians. They said they followers of Christ. But the very first verse we went over said to, to follow the example of Christ must keep God's laws but they're telling you immediately the law is done away with doesn't even make sense unbelievable it doesn't make sense our people have no common sense to understand that if God gave you some laws to follow rules to be righteous where are the new rules to say here here follow these <laughs> <laughs> right right well that's what they're trying to do they're trying to create new rules but see that goes back to hebrews 9 16. yeah like after christ's death after christ's death where where where, it, where is the proof? Who, else, who else died right where's the proof <laughs> that because we say we're followers of christ we're picking up our cross we're, we're following him uh -huh. where is the proof that he laid out these things for us to follow him his mm -hmm. life was the example mm -hmm. his life was the example and in, in his life he kept the commandments. He followed. He did what his father told him to do. Right. Hey, let's go into teaching. We're going to teach you how to follow the Most High properly. We're going to teach you about Easter being false. Give us uh, Hebrews 5 and 12 right quick. It's the book of Hebrews, chapter 5 and verse 12. Bring it out. For when, for when for the time ye ought to be teachers... You have need that one teach you again. Guess what? You need to be reborn again. You got to be taught over. Don't think that you know God if you ain't keeping his uh, commandments. Don't think you know Christ if you're not keeping his commandments. Right. Because we already know you don't know Passover. You don't know Feast and Eleven Bread. But you know Easter. You know Thanksgiving. You know Fourth of July. You know Mother's Day. You know Father's Day. You know all the things that are the commandments of men. But you don't know the commandments of God. If you did... Guess what? You would be teaching them, but you're not. Read. Which be the first principles of the oracles of God. The, we hey, we got to teach you the basics. We got to teach you how to worship the most high basic, basic information, basic information that we now teach our children and they know it and they follow it. Read. And are become such as have need of milk. Yeah, you need milk. Understand that. The black man and black woman, you need milk. You need the basic understanding of the Bible. Read. 
and not of strong meat. Hey, we don't want to hear you want asking us all these deep questions. All we want to hear you say, you know what? How do you keep the Sabbath? Right. You know what? I'm from they the tribe of Judah. Out yet. Do you look? You that's you ain't even named that in the holidays, <laughs> but they go and keep Sunday instead of the Sabbath. Right. You can't make this look. Look, up. look. <laughs> look on your calendar. Sunday is the first day. They don't even know that now. You ask what's the first day of the week, they say Monday. Grown <laughs> men. Look, look. Come if on. You say now, Monday. If you want to hide the truth they go from to work. a Negro, <laughs> if you have want to hide the truth from a Negro, put it in the book. Unbelievable. Put it on the calendar. <laughs> put it on their phone. They ain't reading. They're not reading nothing. The first day of the week is Sunday. The last day of the week is Saturday. Saturday is the Sabbath. Right. Much as we're gonna beat your head over with the Sabbath, we're gonna keep doing it until you feel that pain. It just amazes me how you look at a calendar at least three, four times a week. Right. And you can't, you can't, you can't figure that out. Most yeah. people look at it more than that. Yeah, I, 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 I gave him the bare you, minimum. You was trying to give him bare minimum. Okay. The bare okay. Minimum. <laughs> and I want y'all to understand. You was showing mercy. Hey, <laughs> you need milk. Guess what? Cause you a babe. We're babes in the truth. We're babes in the truth. We're still learning from our elders. Every single day we study. So don't get mad because we just studied longer than you. You have yet to begin to study. You have yet to even uh, begin to say, you know what? We might be wrong. You know what? Maybe Saturday is the seventh day. Yeah, like you say, only one. Okay, most of us looking for one to repent. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Hey, so let's, let's find out why the whole world right now is actually worshiping Easter instead of keeping God's laws. Let's go to uh, Psalms 83 first. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 83, and verse, I'm sorry, one. Yeah, I'll start two. Verse two. Bring it out. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult. The enemies are the other nations. We're going to keep it simple. It's the other nations. And, you know, in biblical time, that would be all the other nations on this earth. But for you right here in America, we know who the enemy is. The enemy gives you vaccination shots. The enemy writes your paycheck. The enemy tells you where, when you can go and where you can't. The enemy, you have to ask them, can you leave the country? Mm -hmm. The enemy don't look like you. Plain and simple. Read. And they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They hate you. They don't love you. They don't like you. They actually hate you. Because no one that hates you puts you in slavery. No one that hates you keeps you in slavery. And no one that hates you no has that. you worshiping another god. What you about to say also? I said no one that loves you do that. Right. <laughs> My fault. No one that loves you. My bad. <laughs> Let me get it right. No one that loves you do, do the things that our enemies have done to us. Read. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people uh -huh. and consulted against thy hidden ones. Read. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. We've been divided. We've been conquered. Read. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. We don't know that we are the children of Israel. All we know is that we're Johnsons, we're Williams, we're Smiths. You know, we don't have a nationality. We have a color. Oh, uh, we have two nationalities, Africa and America. We don't know our true roots. We don't know our heritage. And that's our job is to bring you in the remembrance of how these things came to be and how we can come out of these conditions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go to hey, do you cause what, what was the first thing you was gonna bring out on the um on the uh or like one of the videos? As a matter of fact, let's touch let's touch on that. Let's let the enemy tell you. Because there is some enemies out there, even though they're still the enemy, they might speak some truth. And as soon as they start speaking truth, they know they come with lies. We just pick out, we just pick out the meat off the bone. Let's get that video of uh, Esau telling us that we're worshiping the false holiday. <laughs> so we, we're going to let the white man tell you. Yeah, we're going to let you. Just <laughs> simple then, as that. Then we're going to prove it, but we're going to let the white man tell you. Some websites claim that Easter originated from the celebration of Ishtar, a pagan goddess of sex and fertility, or other pagan goddesses like Ostre, the Anglo-Saxon goddess of spring. And that's where you get the bunny and the eggs from for Easter. They symbolize fertility and new birth. And that's probably true. 
One thing is for sure, you don't find any mention of Christians celebrating Easter in honor of the resurrection of Jesus Christ in the New Testament. The date for Easter was set by the Church of Rome in the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD. And it's no secret that at that time in history, the Church of Rome was making many compromises with paganism in order to make pagans feel comfortable converting to Christianity. Some other pagan holidays and practices that have been given a Christian makeover include Christmas, Lent, huh? All Saints Day, <laughs> and the Sunday Sabbath. With that being said, yeah, no. does that mean it's wrong to Just commemorate the, the resurrection of Jesus on Easter? <laughs> That's what I'm going to be talking about in this video. That's it. But before I... Y'all say something real quick. <laughs> hey, back it up. Back it up just a little bit. Hey, back man, up. literally just back gave up. No, 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 no. We right don't there, want, right, we don't right want it to go right over their head. Right there, right there. Yes. That ain't Jesus. <laughs> hey, that's Jesus. <laughs> that ain't Jesus right there. Who is that? <laughs> Charles Manson with a dress on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you take that down. Oh, but he said, he said a couple of things. He said yeah. during that time, Rome was trying to get pagans to convert that's the, into Christianity. That is right there. <laughs> so, so pretty much to make the pagans comfortable, that Christianity is paganism. Right. That's all it right. is. That's all it is because they wanted the pagans to convert to Christianity. So what that's telling you, they made compromises and, and changed up the whole thing and re, retaught the Bible. The right. wrong way, because they're not teaching the Bible. They taught their own doctrine to make people that was worshiping idols convert to Christianity. This is this is like there's too much information in the world today for people to just be that ignorant. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and 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 remember, they called him it's called her Ishtar or Easter Ishtar. Uh, I sent you a uh, um a pagan one. Should have like the different names. It was the last thing I sent y'all. And it has like the different names of what they call Easter or whatever. Because when we pull scriptures, like I said, you only read the word Easter in the Bible once, but you read it's tall and like that multiple times. My microphone popped. You got it? Oh, praise. Put that on the screen. My zoom in on it. Scroll, scroll. It's right there, just at the top. Come on down, just to that second paragraph, right there. That's all we need. That's all we need. So this right here says Easter, the pagan goddess. And then if you just jump down to the second paragraph right here, where it says all historians agree that the name Easter is derived from the ancient pagan goddess Ishtar, who was also very variously known as Istroth, Ostre, or Ostre. As Tarde, as Tara, Diana, Sibella, and Sir, what is that? Semiramis, and among others. And it says, in fact, she is known as the goddess of a thousand names. The goddess is also associated with fertility symbols, rabbits, and eggs. So you can't make this up. <laughs> right. Like all of the, this information is freely given. Freely given. Right. Freely give you can literally just Google Easter and you'll find it right there. And this is <laughs> this all comes back uh to Nimrod. Unbelievable. Nimrod is in the Bible back uh during the Babylonian worship. And matter of fact, let's get this. This is one reason why this uh goddess of heaven has so many names. Uh let's start at verse one, uh Genesis eleven and one. This is the book of Genesis, chapter eleven. In verse 1. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. So at one time, the whole earth was speaking one language, one speech. Read. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick, and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Understand, this is after the flood. So these people are going to say, you know, let us build us a tower. 
Mm-hmm. Right. We're going to get us a name. <laughs> they actually want to try to fight against God. Really? That's what it's boiled down to. Read. Mm-hmm. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of men build it. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Right. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language. Let us confound their language. Read. That they may not understand one another's speech. Uh Uh-huh. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. So that's how the Tower of, Tower of Babel fell. And that's how we have languages today. So the people went back to different regions of the earth speaking different languages. So all those that say spoke uh, Grecian, they went to Greece. <laughs> so, so the languages and everything, like I said, the people was split up. And wherever they went, they called their goddess who they was worshiping by different names. And we're going to take us a quick break and we'll be right back with you. This is Wartime Radio, WPJM 800. Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Shalom, welcome back to Wartime Radio, WPJM 800. It's Officer Yuana Thumb. We're going to jump right back into it. Hey, finish out uh, Genesis uh, 11 and 9. It's the book of Genesis, chapter 11, verse 9. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. So now we have all the languages that we have today was because of the Tower of Babel. Read. And from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. So what happened was the people went throughout the earth worshiping Ceramuses, the god, the goddess of heaven, a star, a uh, star. Uh, what would the Egyptians call it? Osiris. So there was many names that was brought out. Like uh, like I said, the Greeks called her uh, Venus and Aphrodite. You had the Romans call her Juno and Venus. You had the Ephesians call her Diana. Mm-hmm. You had the Babylonians call her Ceramus or the Queen of Heaven. You had the Assyrians call her Ishtar. You had the Israelites and Venetians call her Asterisk. So the bottom line is there was many languages in many ways to call the same deity yep. that was started during the ta- time of the Tower of Babel. Thousand names. Right. Goddess of a thousand names. Matter of fact, g- uh, give me uh, Wisdom of Solomon 14 and 12. It's the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14 and verse 12. It's for the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. So this is where we get the beginning of our spiritual fornication. This was the devising of idols, and all the nations was worshiping this one same God, but by many different names. Read. And the invention of them, the corruption of life. This is how our life is corrupted now, because now, in this day, guess what? We're just saying Easter, but we're still worshiping the gods that of ancient times. Jump down to verse... Uh, 16. Verse 16. Thus, in process of time, an ungodly custom grown strong was kept as a law. Uh huh. And graven images were worshipped by the commandments of kings. So, you know, like I said, there's nothing new under the sun. We think we're worshiping Jesus. No, we're worshiping a false Christ. We think we're uh, keeping the commandments of God. No, we're worshiping the commandments of men. Hey, it was an article you wanted to bring up. No, it was What's a little thing that you had from, uh, from the two Babylons. Right, let's get that. And this is a book, if you really want to know the origins of holidays and things, hey, get this book called The Two Babylons. Read that from the top, officer. The 
highlight it? No, no really start at the beginning, beginning right there. Then look at Easter. What means the the Turan Easter? The term. The term Easter used. I can't see that. Itself. It's too much light. It is not a okay. Christian name. It bears its Chaldean origin on its very forehead. Easter is nothing else than a star. One of the titles of Beltis, the Queen of Heaven, whose name as pronounced by the people of Nineveh was evidently identical with that now in common use in this country. So pretty much that, that look, there's many things out there that tell you that Easter is pagan. But the problem is, is, is they use Easter now just to get money from our people, just to make millions off us, just like they did back back in Rome. Watch, right. we're going to read it. Go to Acts 19, 24. Watch this. They was mad at the apostles. They was mad at Paul for teaching against Diana. Remember, Diana was one of the names of Ishtar or Easter. So let's read that. Read 24. It's the book of Acts, chapter 19, verse 24. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana. So remember when we read the scripture and talk about that overlay your idols with silver and with gold. Here we go. We got a bro we got a person making silver, using silver to make shrines for Diana. Read on. Brought no small gain unto the crafts. They were making plenty of money. They was making plenty of money. Read. That's your pastors today. Yeah, they absolutely. Making plenty They're of making money plenty today. Plenty of money teaching Easter. Bring your children. Let them run around and pick up colorful hey. eggs. Hey, Easter is the <laughs> Super Bowl of the Christianity. <laughs> Pastor run around talking about I got money. <laughs> <laughs> that exactly how they, what the one do skipping, skipping Bruh. on the money. Read verse, 20, read verse 25. Verse 25. Whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation. So he don't call everybody that makes these shrines. Read on. And said, sirs, ye know that by this craft we have our own wealth. So they done wealth. made all their money by selling shrines of Diana. Read on. Oh, so in other words, they say, hey, look, by Easter, bro, this is how we get our hey, money. Hey, we about to make hey, this bread. We going to get this money. You know, everybody went and got their Sunday soups. They coming in that's, deep. That's it. It. <laughs> now, let's see, now, let's see what Paul was doing. Same thing we doing. Read on. Moreover, ye see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, uh -huh. this Paul has persuaded and turned away much people, uh -huh. saying that they be no gods, which are made with hands. So Paul going around saying, look, they are. Th this is idolatry, what y'all are doing all throughout all Asia Minor. Hey, that's what these teaching men are purposely. All over. He's teaching that all Ephesus, everything. And our, he's, then they literally like, look, this Paul is destroying He's making us lose money. Same thing we doing. That's why people don't want to listen to us. But we don't tell you anyway. Read on. So that not only this, our craft is in danger to be set at naught, uh -huh. but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised. So they worried about the people leaving that false doctrine, just like these Christian pastors today. They worried about people leaving that false church that they in. Right. Read on. And what's crazy is, People are leaving. Yeah, the they, are leaving. Right. they are leaving. They are leaving. Yeah, they, the bishops and the hey, leadership done brought that uh -huh. out. People walking right out of them things because of these lies. You got something else you should say? Yeah, I was going to say, the people saying, you, hey, what is Revelation 1 and 14 talking about? <laughs> That's what they're doing. That's it. That's, That's it. why. Paul was going around teaching the truth, and guess what? These men in purple that you hate and despise, they're going around teaching the truth also. That's it. That's it. Read That's on. right. Read 27 again. Start at the top of 27. Verse 27. So uh -huh. that not only this, our craft is in danger to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised uh -huh. and her magnificence should be destroyed. Read. Whom all Asia and the world worship. So the whole world, don't the world worship Easter today? Right. So the same thing was going on back then. And Paul was teaching, because you know how Christians, they like to run the letters of Paul. Right. They like to say, well, Paul said Paul. Well, Paul was against Easter. Right. Christ was against Easter. All the all the prophets was against Easter. But read on. Let's see what happened with the people. Read. When they heard these sayings, they were full of wrath uh -huh. and cried out, saying, great is Diana of the Ephesians. So they so now the people that realized that the people was turning away from this idol worship. Now they go 10 times harder and start chanting. 
Bruh. Now they start saying that Diana is uh what it say uh uh great is Diana of the Ephesians. Not my Jesus. That's that's what it sounds like that? right there. <laughs> we gonna Not do Easter Sunday. Jesus. Hey, wear your colors. Coming here with your purple, pink, and yellow suit on, looking like a noun later. Read on. And the whole city was filled with confusion. And that's exactly what's happened with our people. Y'all have been confused because of the media. Because that's right here is the equivalent of media pushing this stuff on us. They raise up and push all this stuff on us to make money off of us. Read on. Finish it up. And having caught Gaius and Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, uh -huh. Paul's companions in travel, they rushed with one accord into the theater. So they went in there to, look, they went in there to jack Paul up. That's what they was they doing. Paul. <laughs> they look, just wanted to get the point that Paul was teaching against Easter. And Diana or Easter is all idol worship. They That's use it right. to make money on our people then and they do it today. So don't run to Paul and say, well, Paul was teaching this. Or Paul said, no, he didn't. Paul said, don't do that crap. He was teaching against Easter. Hey, guess what? Christ warned that too. Give me that in Matthew 24 and verse 9. The exact same thing Christ prophesied about, hey, we can read about right here in the book of Acts. And guess what? The same thing Christ prophes uh, prophesied about is the same thing oh, that's man. going can on I get today. One, can, before you go there, can we stay where yeah, we was at? Hey, jump at. down 34. That's, here we go. This is this is this right here is this this is how we do. When, when our people hear us teaching the truth, this is what they start doing. Read 34. <laughs> The book of Acts, <laughs> chapter 19, verse 34. But when they knew that he was a Jew, all with one voice about the space of, of two hours cried out, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. That's what our people do right there. They right. start chanting. Remember when we went to the thing at, uh, yeah, at Passover in Charlotte <laughs> and the people started chanting? Right, right. So all these pastors come out this venue where T.D. Jason was at and they start chanting. Right. We just read our people do this. It's unbelievable. Hey, those people was high <laughs> on T.D. Jakes. They was high. They sure was. Hey, man, hey, unbelievable. Um, and T.D. Jakes told them, make sure you go to church right. on East. Come on now, dog. <laughs> They ain't I, had I'm that, done. Also. They didn't have that brotherly love then, did they? <laughs> Read that what Christ warned us about. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted uh -huh. and shall kill you. Read. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Right, there ain't nothing more hated than the Jew that tells our people to stop following these false gods. Unbelievable. Stop, to come out of these <laughs> uh, traditions of men. To come back to God's laws. Mm -hmm. We're going to be hated. And guess what? We know that some of us are going to lose our life because that's how much you love your idol idolatry. Mm -hmm. Read. And then shall many be offended uh -huh. and shall betray one another. Read. And shall hate one another. That's what's going on. That's what's going on. Hey, when you come into this truth and you start worshiping God, guess what? Everybody, all these biblical scholars start telling you how wrong you is. Mm -hmm. They never read the Bible. They don't know the Bible. All they do is know those nice catchphrases, you know, that God is good. God loves everybody. Oh, man. Oh, man. So Jesus. <laughs> we just start making up new languages and new terms, <laughs> new words to try to justify our wickedness. But, but all we have to do is come back to the simplicity that's in Christ, which is keeping the laws. It's very simple. That's right. God gave you holy days. Just follow them. Christ kept the holy days. He kept the feast days. Why can't you? I mean, how hard is that? He didn't come to destroy that. Matter of fact, get that. He didn't come to destroy these laws. Look, didn't nobody do. Look, we the only ones that did Passover for a whole week last week. Right. You know Everybody, what I'm saying? We're the only ones on this radio station right now. Right. Unbelievable. No listeners knew last week was actually Passover according to the Bible. Right. <laughs> The one that we was ordained and told to do throughout our generations, but then they make up Easter. Unbelievable. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So Christ didn't come to destroy the high holy days. Christ kept the high holy days. Christ was born during the Passover, and he kept the Passover. Matter of fact, let's get that. Let's uh, let me get um, Luke two forty one. 
It's the book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 41. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. They went what? Every, every year. year at the feast of the Passover. Read. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. So uh, during the time that Christ turned 12, guess what? He had kept the Passover 12 straight years. That's right. He was keeping the Passover when during the time that, of his birth. Read. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the now, child. Now, read verse 42 again. Verse 42. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. That's the custom. That's our custom. They, he didn't say he went and kept uh, Easter. Mm -hmm. No, we kept the Passover. He kept the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Woo! He did these things. And remember, that's the example we should follow. So you're saying that <laughs> Christ, that Passover was already set in place before Easter during this particular time. Right. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Something ain't right here. <laughs> Something ain't right here. So <laughs> how in the world, we just, we, well, Esau, our friendly oppressor, just told us earlier how Passover got in the place, or how Easter took the yeah. place of Passover in the Christian church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Christians can't figure this out? You got to be kidding me, man. Hey, let's, Stop see, it. let's see if the, uh, they kept the Passover after Christ was gone. Give me that in Acts uh, 18. Let's start at verse 1. It's the book of Acts, chapter 18 and verse 1. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth. How about 1 Corinthians 5 and 6. It's the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 6. Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Uh -huh. Purge out, therefore, the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, Read. as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Mm -hmm. Read. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Let us do what? Let us keep the feast. So what feast is we keeping? It's the Passover. Mm -hmm. Read. Not with old leaven, uh -huh. neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. So you know what? When you come and keep the Passover, you get rid of the wickedness. Right. Get rid of the sin that's in your life. Guess what? Easter is that sin. All these holidays that we've been following, that's the sin that's in our lives that we've been keeping. Look, the thing is, is, is we was put in slavery because of worshiping Easter. Right. Remember, another name was Ashtoreth or Diana, things like that. It had many names, but it was the same God. So we was put in slavery literally for following that. So go to uh, Judges 10 and 6. Pray, give me the spirit. Judges 10 and 6. We was put into slavery uh, under under Ammon, the Japanese, because of this crap. Read that. Once you get it. This is the book of Judges, chapter 10 and verse 6. Uh -huh. And the, the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. Read. And served Balaam uh -huh. and Ashtaroth. That's Easter. That's your Easter, another name for Easter. Read on. And the gods of Syria, mm -hmm. and the gods of Zidon, and the gods of Moab, and the gods of the children of Ammon, mm -hmm. and the gods of the Philistines, and forsook the Lord and served not him. So it put Easter in the list of all the different gods that our people was following instead of God of the God of the Bible, the yeah. most high God. Read on what happened. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. He got mad at us, read. And he sold them into the hands of the Philistines and into the hands of the children of Ammon. So we went into slavery under, under two nations because of this, under Ammon and the right. Philistines because of this, because we wanted to follow East. That's why we're in slavery right now. I, I think, I, I think, I'm not sure, I think, I think that's what the uh, oppressor said earlier when in regards to uh, <laughs> Rome 
and that's all of exactly these other gods. Said. Yeah, that's a, this is yeah. exactly what we just read. Yeah, Rome was trying to get the pagans to come into Christianity yep. and forsake or to cut off all of these other gods. Mm-hmm. This, you, you like how can you not be able to put this information <laughs> together? There's a spell on you, brothers and sisters out there, that you got to break. It's witchcraft, hey, man. Hey, go to uh, Jeremiah 7 and verse 17. Just to show you that all throughout this Bible, that's what we was doing. Uh, you, the Diana, Ephesians, the Star, it's, it's all throughout the Bible. It's just being called different names right. during we, different times of captivity. And we was told to stop doing it. Right. And just we never like, stopped. And, but we, would, we wouldn't stop. Or we would stop for a little while. Then he would save us. Then we go right back into doing it again. Bruh. You talking about like we're telling them right now? Yeah, like we're telling them right now. They ain't going to listen. <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> The book of Jeremiah, chapter 7, verse 17. Seest thou not what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? That's you so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans. Read. The children gather wood, and the fathers kindle the fire, Uh and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven. To who? To make cakes to the queen of heaven. Let me see. Who called them the queen of heaven? The Babylonians. They called her the queen of heaven. Read. And to pour out drink offerings unto other gods. To who? Unto other gods. Mm-hmm. Ain't that that one of our still one of our customs? They pour mm-hmm. out the drink right now. Is it? We've been Dang. doing these things. <laughs> Read that they may provoke me to anger. That's what we do. We provoke the Most High to anger with all these customs of men. He told us not. We was warned of this. Give me that Colossians two and eight. We got to learn how to repent. That's Amen. the key. Woo! Get out of that prideful spirit and say, not my church, and say, yes, this is my church. They, they, these brothers are right. They coming straight out the Bible. They give you the history of what's been going on from the beginning of time. And we're going to pretend that now, during this captivity where we're running around, where, where men are marrying uh, men, women marrying women, and then say, you know what? There's nothing but righteousness in America. Just, just like Bishop, the bishop said, man, we in a time where we worship more gods now than we ever have before. Right. Unbelievable. Read. Book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 8. Read it out. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Uh-huh. After the tradition of men. After what? The tradition of men. Hey, all throughout this Bible, you see the worshiping. Of Ceramicus, a star, Tammuz. These are other gods. And now you don't know anything about God's holy days, but you know all the holidays that our enemies had given us. Mm-hmm. Read. After the rudiments of the world. Because that's where they come from. Yep. Read. And not after Christ. Hey, if you if I ask the so called black man, name me three things Christ celebrated. He can't he do can't. it. Like, like Denzel said, right. you can't, can't do it. <laughs> you don't know the answer, Sway. <laughs> hey. what happens. Unbelievable. You got something obviously you want to bring up? Hey, we got to learn to repent. That's hey, what Christ told us. Hey, that's the same thing Samuel said. Go to 1 Samuel 7 and uh, 3. Same thing, same thing we're telling our people today. Look, if we come up out of worshiping these idols, the most high gonna save us. Right. But he ain't saving us while we sitting up here worshiping other gods. It's not happening. Go to first Samuel seven and I think it's two or three, but I think it's three. It's the book of first Samuel, chapter yeah. seven, verse three. Bring it out. And Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel, saying, if you do return unto the Lord with all your hearts. That's repentance. That's the same thing we're asking our people to do. Look, return. Return to God with your mind, with everything you got. Read on. Then put away the strange gods and Ashtoreth. And Ashtoreth. Easter, put that mess away. Like, like I was, that's the Super Bowl of Christianity. But our people won't let it go. Read. From among you. Mm-hmm. And prepare your hearts unto the Lord and serve him only. Keep the commandments and faith in Christ as the Bible says. Read on. And he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. So Samuel said, look, if we repent and quit following these idols, then the most high going to save us. 
ain't that the same thing we telling them? That's the same thing. That's the same thing we were taught and we saw it. It made perfect sense. Dang, I'm sitting up here worshiping an idol. Let me come up at this. Because we want our people to be saved. We don't want to stay in captivity. So same thing we, our, all of the prophets before was teaching. And we're just saying the same thing today. Oh, burrito. Let's see what the children of Israel did back then. Then the children of Israel did put away Balaam and Ashtaroth uh -huh. and serve the Lord only. So we got to do that again. We That's have to right. do that again. Right. As a nation of people, we have to do this again. Put away all these idols and come up out of this false doctrine and eat the and crap. Hey, we got to do that. Hey, give me that Psalm 94 and 16. I love this verse. And this, hey, this verse right now, guess what? This is a perfect time. It's Easter weekend. This is a perfect time for our people to stand up and say, you know what? Not no more. Not no more. I'm through serving these other gods. I'm through following these holidays. And if the preacher is not going to teach God's word, I need to go find someone that's, that will. Guess what? Come on down to 1823 Greg Street in Columbia, South Carolina, that's and right. learn the word right. of God. Learn that's how to right. keep these law, statute, commandments. We'll teach you. Read. The book of Psalms, chapter 94, verse 16. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Hey, Christian church. Which one of you is going to rise up against the evildoers? When are you going to rise up and say, you know what? I'm tired of having sin in my life. I'm tired of seeing my brothers and my sisters dying in these streets. I'm tired of the conditions of our people. When are you going to stand up? Read. Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? We should be sick of the sin, sick of the killing, sick of the baby mamas, the daddies, baby daddies. We should be sick of the uh, homosexuality that's running amok in our community. We should be sick of these things that's plaguing our people. Mm -hmm. We are a great people. God created us to be the kings of this earth, mm -hmm. the gods of this earth. Right. And look what we've done. We traded it in to worship other gods, and now we're at the bottom of society. How long are you going to be tired of being simple? How long are you going to be tired of being at the bottom? Right. When are you going to rise up and take your place? Christ is about to return on this earth and judge the wickedness of this earth. Don't be caught up still serving these other gods. You got something else? Um, I guess I, uh, let me get Matthew uh, 16. Verse 24, just going back to the example uh, that we read in, uh, in Peter's when we first started about how Christ left us an, an example. In his, in his example, we don't find him keeping these, these high or these, these holidays that right. are on the earth right now. All right. Read what you got. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 24. Read out. Then said Jesus unto his disciples. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Why? Because it's very clear to be understood that Christ didn't do his own thing when he was on the earth. Mm -hmm. He followed the instruction given to him by his father. So he's telling us as an example, if we read that part again, read that again. If any man will come after me. He says if any man will come after him, come on. Let him deny himself. We got to deny ourselves. Read. And take up his cross and follow me. Read on. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. The problem with our people is we don't want to lose our life. Mm -hmm. right. Because losing our life in this world, according to the scripture, means to put away all of the filth and all of the, the, the doctrine that we've learned in the Christian church right. up until we hear the truth of this Bible speaking. Right. So ultimately, everybody that's in earshot of, of, of this segment that's being played today, they're not following Christ. No. Mm -hmm. They're following after Satan. You're following after Lucifer. I want to go back to Colossians chapter 2 and verse 6. I know you read verse 8, but in conjunction with how Christ is telling us to deny ourselves and to lose our lives in this world, Let's read Colossians chapter 2 and verse 6 when you understand the life and the example that Christ left for us. Read. 
It's the book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 6. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus so the Lord. If you have received Christ Jesus the Lord in truth, you know how they say? In spirit and in truth. If you receive Christ Jesus in spirit and in truth, read. So walk ye in him. You got to walk ye in him after the things that he's done. Not after the things we've learned uh, that have been set up by Rome, as we've uh, clearly heard the oppressor say. Dang. Read on. Rooted and built up in him. No, rooted and built up in Rome. Rooted and built up in him. No, rooted and built up in paganism. Rooted and built up in him. Rooted and built up in Christ. Come on. And established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. So like officer just brought out, you're not being taught. Right here it says established in the faith as ye have been taught. If you're not being taught, what's the address again? 1823 Greg Street. There it is. That's right. Columbia, <laughs> South Carolina. Hey, this has been Wartime Radio. Hey, this is Officer Yuanathan. Officer Kalaya. Officer Aton. Officer Yuanathan. Hey, we're your frontline soldiers. Hey, shalom. Thank you for tuning in to Wartime Radio Show. Follow us on all social media platforms at IUIC Columbia, South Carolina. Join our congregation every Saturday at 4 p.m. Located at 1823 Greg Street, Columbia, South Carolina. For more information, call us at 803-708-4861 at extension 237. Share our show with your friends and family. And thank you again for tuning in to Wartime Radio Show. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling, these are how we're men repented at heart, the scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth.